Hey guys, something that we are excited to tell you about is a company that is taking wine to the next level. If you've been at a restaurant or grocery store trying to pick out a bottle of wine but had no idea where to start, like me, or you're just looking for a unique event for your friends, family, or coworkers, In Good Taste is a new type of winery that can help you do both. Their many wine bottle tasting flights help people with varying degrees of wine knowledge learn more about wine. In Good Taste provides tasting flights and complimentary virtual tasting over Zoom. The tastings create a safe space for novices and pros to ask questions about the wine, the regions, food pairings, etc. Unlike the traditional lecturing at most wineries, In Good Taste provides a fun event with trivia and quirky food pairings like which wine pairs best with Crunchwrap Supremes. Each mini bottle is one glass of wine, so you're getting two full bottles of wine, but in a variety for just $65. This lets you learn more while committing to less. The fear of rejection, yeah, it's like fun and all this, but when you look at it on a bigger scale is, is how do you react to it? Right. Do you sit and wallow and do you let it paralyze exactly. you? Exactly, that's, that's just it, man. I do. I do yeah. indeed. I, I, I'm horrible with replaying things that don't even matter. I mean, it could have happened to me six months ago, a year ago, and I'm still replaying it in my head, yeah. and it's still shaking me. You're bringing us in. Oh, wait. <laughs> I, I get that responsibility back? <laughs> yeah, you got it. It's your school. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Darren Woodson Show. Uh, we want to start this episode off uh, with a thank you. Uh, engagement recently has been awesome. Yes. Um, the team here has, has done, we've been really diligent about putting some content out there, uh, taking you into Darren's life. We're going to get more into Ben and I's, yeah. uh, but you guys have done a phenomenal job engaging with us, asking questions, commenting, sharing. Uh, so we want to give a couple thank yous and Ben's going to, Ben's going to read a few of these and, and, uh, give his heartfelt thank yous. Yeah. I just think about. Tyler, I'm, I'm going to ask you this. What's the best gift you can possibly give to somebody? Or Darren, you can answer too. Oh, am I included in this? Yeah, you can. You oh, can best. You can give. I mean, the compliment. best gift? Compliment. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. a compliment. Com yeah. No, yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's I was right thinking answer. more along the lines of time. Yes, that is. If you best give gift. somebody your, your time, time yes. there's nah. nothing that can yes, match that. Yes, true. Okay. Because time is so valuable, right? Yeah. You, you talk about all the time. I don't have time. I don't have time. So when you give us this hour every week, that's, that's like the best thing because, and I'm being dead serious, like your schedule wow. and to know how busy you are, the fact that you sit down and you take time to do this, it really is meaningful and people appreciate that. And I say all that to say a genuine heartfelt thank you to you listening because you are taking the time each week mm, to join us. Yeah. Three episodes a week, that's a lot of time to be dedicating to this. And then you compound that with the people who are taking time to give us a, a review yeah. yeah, or taking time to share it on Instagram mm -hmm. or Facebook or whatever. So Twitter, the fact that people take time to do that, I don't know about you guys, but that blows me away. Yeah. yeah. And that is so awesome. You see, that you know, the interaction to all together, just the interaction and making it a community and, you know, the topics that we do talk about are coming from, mm -hmm. you know, some, from uh, some of the, audiences that, that that's listening to us so mm -hmm. taking the time you're right man you know all, we always complain about time and people eating away our time at our time that that is that is more and, than anything yeah and I and I think too and, and I, I know you're going to go through a couple of these but I, I also want to say thank you because that gives us energy as well yeah right mm -hmm. and and we love doing this and we're going to continue doing this but when you interact and you share your stories and, and you're commenting to us or sharing with other people, that's what gives us more energy and that's gets right. us hyped mm -hmm. yeah. to keep doing this. Yeah. And so, so thank you. Yeah, every time somebody shares it on Instagram or they write a review on the podcast app, which I'm about to read one, like I said, like Tyler just said, it, it fuels us, man. Yeah. It's so fun to hear. And uh, so we're very grateful. One caught my eye just recently, a review on the podcast app. And the other thing about reviews on podcast apps we were just with a well-known person. I'm not going to say who they are. And they mentioned they get inquiries to be on podcasts all the time. Mm -hmm. And their standard rule that what they've told the people, the team that manages those requests is that if they're brand new, if they don't have many reviews, I don't want to do, 
I just can't get to everybody. Right. And so your reviews actually help us get better guests, mm. believe it or not. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, obviously we love it personally and it feels good to see it. But you as a listener, this serves you as well yeah. because bigger name guests will be more uh, inclined to say yes when we yeah. reach out and request. Mm. And everybody's been great. We, we've, we've had some awesome, not saying that we haven't, but the point is, as we continue to grow this thing, we're going to get better guests. And yeah, you know, and that's the thing. We got to rely on and you guys. I don't guys want to go that. down exactly. I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but at, at the same time, like the interaction talks speaks to us. So when you interact with us, tell us who that guest is that you want on the show. Yep. yep. So we can we can reach out to them at the same time because the same thing, and and that's what's great about this is is we only have so much time in the day to consume additional content. So we right. may not know of someone's story. We may not have reached them right. or read someone's book. And so, if, and, and that's, what's great about this community is, is that y'all can share that with us, mm -hmm. move it up on yeah. the, on our list. Yeah. I love the way that Tyler, Tyler says this all the time. We're not, we don't have these microphones in our face because we feel like we have everything figured out. Right. This isn't a how to podcast. This is a three guys being real about the issues that we face on a day-to-day -day basis and that many of you probably face as well, guys and girls. And so we're not trying to be, you know, teach or preach. Mm -hmm. We're in the fight with you. Yep. And that's what this is about. So interact with us. The more you do that, again, the better guests that we can have and the better that we can serve you guys. But one uh, recent review that caught my attention that I wanted to read and just, again, just a heartfelt thank you. The subject line is found a new favorite show. Thanks to Real AF, I discovered your show. My favorite part is how you tie lessons in life and work back to the topic. I listen while in the car and don't want to get out of the car until I finish your podcast. Thank you for all you do. I mean, That's if awesome. that doesn't jack you up, I don't yeah, know what will. You will, bro. Yeah, so that thank you so awesome. much for that. Yeah. We, we love you guys. We so much appreciate Give a shout you. out who wrote that. Uh, it doesn't really say. I mean, it, it has a little name, but. It's SMX 1979. So whoever you yeah. are, SMX 1979. 79. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for that. That's awesome. So anyway, didn't plan on necessarily. No, no that's. But that's I just good. felt like it's, we needed to say that. No, it's, it's been, important. Yeah, it's, the engagement's been amazing. And lately. that's why we do this, right? Is, yeah. is I think all three of us uh, are, we all have the same mindset. And it's like, look, we've, whether we've had, a, you know, to the top of the mountain or we were in a valley, but our goal is to make an impact yeah. and our, our purpose is to make an impact in whatever way that is. And so, you know, having this community come together and interacting and it's, man, that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So yeah. we got it. We got to recognize that. So the antithesis of that, thank you for <laughs> selecting us <laughs> today. Uh, today we want to talk about uh, something that, that we've all dealt with at some point or another. Uh, some more than others, um, but the idea of how do we handle rejection? Uh, and we're going to start this off with some kind of lighthearted, uh, lighthearted stories. Uh, but the idea of rejection and how you how you <laughs> going down? Let's just jump into it, man. That's right. Hey, when you first hear about rejection, what's the first thing you think of? It's like shut down, right. shut down by the opposite I think sex. Of women. By the opposite <laughs> sex. Absolutely. So let's give some stories <laughs> before we get into Tyler. Give us a story because I know you walked in All here. Right. So so really growing up, I never had a ton of confidence uh, with girls. I just I just never did. Uh, I didn't really date. I had one girlfriend in high school. Uh, but I just, I was never the guy, I was always friends with all of them, yeah. but anytime it turned into <laughs> a romantic interest, I was the worst, uh, like absolutely the worst. I like couldn't I, make first moves. I, couldn't I think do. I could fight you with that for that time, but <laughs> continue. <laughs> but so, uh, one specific story and, and this really actually kind of shaped my college because anytime we were at a party or a bar, like I could not even like make eye contact with girls. Mm. Because if if I felt like she made eye contact with me and then like wasn't interested, then pff, dang, like yeah. not good enough. Yeah, I mean that that was a story with Tiffany. My wife is like four years. It's just I'm not good enough for her. Like mm -hmm. she's way too way too good for me. But one story that really kicked it off is my senior trip, and I was in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Okay, before this, yeah, 
go before the senior trip, how were you with girls? Were not, you saying, not, same no, way, no, no confidence. Not. Yeah, no okay. confidence, right? Okay. Like a girl would have to approach me or I'd have to have her friend come over and say, oh, hey, Susie thinks that you're really <laughs> cute. You should ask her. Nah, nah, nah. Like I really was just like not confident when it, right. came, when it came to girls. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always wore like, small shirts when I probably should have been like a large shirt. You still so wear had, small shirts. So I always had pit stains because they were so tight. So I always had sweaty armpits. Always. That was my deal. <laughs> just a little side note. Just paint the picture. Okay, no, go no, ahead. That's good. That's good. Keep going. I'm closing my eyes. Keep that's going. what I'm saying. Think about it. Yellow Hurley shirt with white poop shells. <laughs> pit stains. <laughs> Dude, All bleach right, blonde hair. You Here we go. You describe me better besides the bleach blonde hair. <laughs> So, uh, substitute bleach ball hair for a bowl cut. You got me. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, uh, it never really like translated. Cause I was like the captain of the sports team. I was the school president. Like that confidence never translated to it. And so I go on my senior trip and I put this trip together and we go to Port of Arts and there was like, I don't know, 15 to 20 of us that went down mm. and it was the first time and I never drank in high school. I never did anything. It was the first time I like let loose. It was the first time I was like, okay, we're getting out. Oh, <laughs> hey, I'm just Tonight, saying. We're and I, in. <laughs> hey y'all. And I trained and I'm going to be honest. I trained harder for my senior trip than I think I did ever in college. I was right. in better shape for my senior trip than I was anything you know, else. That was so I ate yeah. lettuce and ice chips for six weeks <laughs> before that trip. I'm good. I had a fresh, <laughs> I had a fresh breath of air. Earlier. I'm good. So, so to reinforce the, you know, the lack of confidence and fear of rejection is uh, one night I'm feeling good, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I felt confident, like I had my visor backwards. I had my puka <laughs> shells, I had my Arnett glasses. I was feeling good, right? And all tan and I was like as lean as I've ever been. And I, and I walk up to a girl and I find like, I'm going to make a move. And she was like the best looking girl right. at this, at this deal. And I walk up to her and I said, Hey, my name's, my name's okay, Tyler. Wait a minute. Did you, you didn't know, know her? You know, wait no, a minute. You no. didn't know her. But did no. your boys know you were going to walk up to her? Oh, they anyone, hyped me up. They hyped oh, me up. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, okay. I was iron her. It was that one that, like, she walks in, you kind of track her right. the whole time, right? Yeah. You see her, and so you track her. So she wasn't her. with y'all's senior trip? No, she was a different group. So uh, there was okay. other high schools uh, that all went you. down on this, okay. on this senior oh, trip. Yeah, okay, so now you're speaking the language. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it wasn't like you walked in oh, the spot, no. having no, no, no confidence, and you walked no, in. Your boys no, no, are gassing you up. Go, And which alcoholic beverage did you consume to Tito's Tito's handmade vodka? Bro, no, it was like Mai Tais and Pina Coladas, bro. It's my yeah, first no time drinking. <laughs> Penny drinks, something like that. Kentucky Deluxe. Oh, uh, and I think, and I want to say this was like a foam party too, like even next level, right? Paps. And so, so I walk over and, and, and I, and I and introduce myself and just like, she could care less. Mm -hmm. And I, shoot, she probably had five or six other guys come up to her. And, but I like, actually, I, I, what, normally I just walked away, but then I like tried to dig in mm, and she goes, I doubled down. Oh, dude. I was like, you're not giving me much attention or feedback, but you haven't told me to leave yet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and then I go, uh, and then I said something else. She goes, I'm just going to stop it. I'm not interested. Mm. And I go, oh. <laughs> you turned around. Oh, literally tail between my legs, <laughs> like hunched over. Like I went and sat down, but the, it wasn't like, okay. It wasn't that embarrassing. All my buddies were like, Oh, dang! Hey, yeah. you know, but like what it did is it reinforced all those fears that I had, mm. it, you know, at, at a younger age and it carried through all through college. And, and it was, it really, honestly, I had girlfriends to have girlfriends mm -hmm. because I, I didn't want to date. I hated right. the bars. I hated mm. going out and talk, trying to talk to girls at parties. I, I, I just, that was not my deal because I had this like anxiety. I never really dealt with anxiety at a younger yeah. age, except when it came to rejection. And so what it did is it completely shut me down mm. instead of, you know, and I think we'll talk about it a little bit later is like how to actually handle rejection Right. is okay. Learn from it. I wasn't there very smooth. I probably should have taken the puka shells off. Like, you know, whatever it was, no, right? Dude, Learn from were, it those and were be fire better. Back in the yeah. day. But what I what it did is it shut me down. It really shut me down. I mean, and I've I never really recovered with Tiffany. She made the first move, as she said mm, on the show. Yeah. You know, she reached out. She told me, like, on our first date, you are you gonna never are you gonna kiss me? I literally never did when it was like, I mean, it's it doesn't bother me now. I mean, there's a reason for it, right? Because right. what if I like you know, was, was the opposite. And I, you know, 
got with some girl that I shouldn't have been with and missed out on Tiffany. But, but it, yeah, but isn't that most kids though, as as you grow up, most kids, we, we all go through this, right? It's like Did we you go, go through that. Yes. We go through, I went through the ugly duckling stage for sure with zero confidence. Like zip yeah. teeth were all out. <laughs> like yeah, three, but, hold on, hold three on. teeth. But you're a two, but, you're but, saying, but I'm saying like but, eighteen to twenty five, right? Oh, those right, are your see, prime years. What, okay, those are prime years. When was your awkward? When was your awkward? Oh stage? man, fifteen, four. I mean, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Just growing up through, hmm. going up through high school. I think there was a part of it where, like, no. First of all, it's in our nature to to defy, uh, you know. Rejection. We don't. No one yeah. wants to be rejected, right? Right. You're not human if you say, "Well, I'll, you know, I'm yeah, okay." With we rejection. all have those friends. friends. Yeah. We yeah. all, every, all of us, had those friends that oh, just yeah. shrugged it off. Oh, I got a buddy, man, I, and I'll tell a quick story. I had a buddy in college. Can't mention his name because he's he's <laughs> married with kids Ronde. and all. Demarcus. <laughs> why is it got to be? <laughs> why is it got? Why is it got to be those names? Why can't it be Tom? Jim. <laughs> Bob. Anyways, <laughs> we would be at the club, man. Yeah. And this dude had extreme confidence. Like, rejection was not a part of it. We would be at the club, and girls would walk by. And it was like, hey, 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 hey. Girl, keep walking. Oh, that's your problem. It's not mine. Girl, another girl walking. Hey, hey, hey. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, girl. No, hey, let me talk. Girl, keep walking. <laughs> he had no problem. Like, and he knew. Here's the thing. He knew by the end of the day, he was going to land at least one. Dude, now, that it's all one about the made numbers. It's, it's in the all numbers, right? numbers game. He played a numbers game. And it was embarrassing to sit there and watch this all day. But he, you knew by the yeah. end of the day, now he could, the one he found, maybe not yeah. be the, you know. Yeah. You know. He, yeah. he wasn't I mean, quality. quality. He was he's, all, he's all about he was, quantity over quality. But the confidence. <laughs> yeah. Was unmatched, and I've seen that before. But I think we've all gone through that process where you get rejected or you, you, you build up enough confidence. Yeah. The thing is you build this confidence up and you go, all right, I'm gonna go, I, I just got to go. I got to go talk to this girl, right? And then you walk up, and then you get that cold shoulder or that cold lean. Trust me, in college I've had that a couple of times because I, I didn't like to go to a, a, a bar and say, okay, I'm just going to be average today. I'm just gonna, yeah. you know, hit a base hit. I'm going. I'm swinging for the fences, <laughs> like I want the hottest one. I'm gonna go to that one, right? So you go up to them and they give you the cold. Like I've gotten the cold shoulder a few times, and I've been like, "Damn, dude, I, I got ramped up for this one, <laughs> like this." Yeah. That, that, and it hurts. It does. And you go back, like you said, you go back. But then here's the thing. You have to keep on swinging. You have to keep on swinging. Yeah. For, for what you want, right? Yeah. Because rejection is, if it holds you down and it puts you in this, this, this sorrow state and you're just sitting there like, oh, my God, you have to rebound. Like, the rebound is the one. That's right. The rebound yeah. is the one. Because yeah. at some point, you, that, that your body or your mind is to say, hey, man, mm. I'm better looking than that. I, I could. <laughs> well, I and, and, and we joke. Here's the thing is I think we joke, you know, yeah, it's funny, like dating, this whole thing, the rejection yeah. and that aspect. But what it what it comes down to is it's a it's a much bigger issue, mm -hmm. right? It's a bigger issue of not valuing yourself really like other people see you. Right. right. You, you, you think of yourself as a lesser lesser mm -hmm. than what everyone else actually thinks of you and what you actually mm -hmm. are. And so what I learned from that was I also learned. Dude, I'm terrified of rejection in sports, right? I'm terrified rejection mm. in with friends. Ter terrified of rejection in a lot of things. I mean, that, think and again, I know you had a very different career, but like for me, the same feeling that I had in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, was the same feeling when uh, I got cut in Miami. Mm. It's yeah. the same feeling, wow. right in my stomach, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing because now it's like, okay, it's validated. All these fears that I wallowed in for a long time is now validated. The challenge and, and the, the, as, I, as I mature and I grow older and, and, you know, obviously confidence builds, but what you've got to realize is that's one scenario. And, mm -hmm. and you do have to understand the numbers games. And you do have to understand that just because you're rejected one time doesn't mean that's the end. Right. And, and we've talked about it, right? <clears throat> embrace, embrace the suck, right? The yeah. times that it's bad. If someone tells you no, then, okay, why'd they tell me no? Like, what do I got to do to be better? Yeah. Okay, is it on me? Was it in my control? Could, what, could I, what could I control? And what can I not control? Mm -hmm. Fix the things that I can. Let the things go that I can't. 
you know, and so, and, and, and that's one thing that the, the fear of rejection, yeah, it's like fun and all this, but when you look at it on a bigger scale is, is how do you react to it? Right. Do you sit and wallow and do you let it paralyze exactly. you? That's, that's just it, man. I do. I do yeah. indeed. I, I, I'm horrible with replaying things that don't even matter. I mean, it could have happened to me six months ago, a year ago, and I'm still replaying it in my head yeah. and it's still shaking me. Yeah. And so for me, that's what I'm thinking while you guys are sitting here talking is why am I like that? Why can't I shake things easily? Number one, I have a confidence issue, but then when something, when I do get rejected, why do I, why do I let it stick with me for so long? Yeah. And okay, well, never, it, but it's, it's two things though, but if it sticks with you, does it debilitate you from to doing it all over again? I think there's a little bit yeah, of this. And it, and it all depends on the context of what we're talking about. Yeah, the, yeah. the scenario is different. You know, some things I'm more confident than I think my confidence personally comes from past wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if I've been, if I've excelled in an area, I don't have a problem with quote unquote rejection because I know there's going to be something right coming along in another way. But if it's something that I haven't excelled in, Tyler, like yeah. you for girls, I yeah. never, every girl I ever dated, my wife now had to come to me. Like it was, mm. there was zero game, <laughs> right. none. And so in that arena, it was always a lack of confidence and rejection really beat me down. Mm -hmm. In an area that I may have accelerated, you know, excelled more in, um, I can't, you know, I'm just trying to think of different areas, but. I don't know. It's just, it, it depends on my track record, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, but I handle rejection differently in different scenarios. Right. Yeah. But, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, like, I think about what we do. Uh, yeah. Our, our day jobs, right? Our day jobs are reaching out to complete strangers, yeah. selling ourselves, selling our service, selling our resources, and, and then getting them to see value in us. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we don't provide value, they say no and they move on, right? So we get nine no's for every yes yeah. in our business. And, and so for me, and, and I'll, I'll take it real life is, uh, and, and there'll be two stories here. One's, one's more recent, but cold calling. Mm -hmm. I dread cold calling. Mm -hmm. I hate it. And it's for the same reason that I hated approaching girls in high school and college was because it like wrecks me. If I call someone and they say, no, nah, not interested or no, nope, no, nope, I'm yeah. good. Like it literally wrecks me. Like that's, that's, I dread cold calling. So that's why for me in my business, it's all relational. So it's, it took a lot longer to build up, but it's all about, okay, Hey, now I'm going to have you come to me because you know, it's a lot easier. I dated, lot I dated her less sister resistance. for a while. Yeah. And, oh, he's a less good resistance. dude. Like yep. you need to go, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's that. So it's the referral aspect of it. Whereas there's some guys that we work with in, in the business that are cold calling machines yeah. they can get told 99 times and if they get that one it's all worth it for them yeah but We're, it's the way you're built too yeah you know you've had success in your life yeah uh, you've had you know you've had some wins but it also comes in with like <laughs> there are times that every year i go through this guys every year they the hall of fame comes up yeah every year since what five years after i retired yeah i deal with a rejection right at a bigger just at that level, right? Yeah. But it is rejection. It is, it is a sense of, yeah. I played this game at a high level. Here comes the rejection at, at, you know, when it comes down to it, right? That's one thing. And then going into the commercial real estate world. No, let's stay on right? the whole thing. I was say, yeah, you just, hold on. No, you no, no, just no. out-trumped our so, no, <laughs> rejections. But, it, but, but that's the, but that's <laughs> the reality yes. of it, right? But, it, but, it's, but I want to I wanna, we'll go back to it. that. It's real. Oh, yeah, okay. We'll go back to that. But in the commercial real estate game, so when I, when I retired from the NFL and I went to ESPN, there was humility. Like I sucked at being in front of the camera. And I had to go through that process. But then when I got in the commercial real estate world, right, mm -hmm. it's like – I got in the business and we had three RFPs in the first three months that yeah. I was involved with. Yeah. We lost all three. Yeah. All three. And I had to sit down with Roger Staubach and he told me, he said, before I even got into the business, he told me, he said, you're going to lose. People are going to reject you. This is a different landscape. Have humility and understand that you can build off this. Yeah. Don't stop, right? Mm -hmm. But that's a part of it as well is that, yeah, no one wants to be rejected, but if you're someone that's had success, treat it with humility, man. That's right. Just like, uh, hey, I'm, I'm no different than anybody else. Get off your fucking high horse. Yeah. I'm no different than anybody else. How do I rebound from yeah. this? Yeah. I think part of it is, is 
like I said, or let's take the cold calling example, yeah. Tyler. I'm the same as you. Like it, I dread it mm. because I don't have a track record in my past that says I'm good at this. Yeah, and I just lost my. But but, no, 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 no. but but what hey. you're saying though, but you cold calling three years ago versus you cold calling now. Mm. Think yeah. about how different it is. And yeah. I still don't. I still don't enjoy it because right. I, I don't like having to sell myself. And, right. and, I, and Tiffany and I were talking about this the other day. Like, I don't. I love first meetings. I love talking right. to people, but I don't like an unsolicited sell. Like, I don't like when I'm just like pushing let me, myself. Let me ask you this: if if the food and the house depended on it, like if everything depended on you making that call, are you gonna make that call? No, just honestly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. of like, course, of course. Right, but are you gonna and, and then are you gonna deal with the rejection? You have to. You don't have time. See, All right, there's some, but there, but there are certain people that have gone through. This is the thing. It's like yeah. anything else, like in sports or whatever. There are certain people who have been so fucking hungry yeah. for a long time, right, and been starving and starving. They have built up this this callus to yeah. be like, yeah. no does not mean no, and, and that's a great place to feed the energy. I think I feed the energy more from, is this something I really want? So it's not, a, it's not for me personally, it's not more of what am I missing out on? It's more of what am I going to gain from this? Yeah. And if it's something I'm really, really wanting, right. The rejection doesn't bother me as much because I want it so bad. Right. Yeah. But to your point, there is another way that can motivate you and it's, well, I got to feed my family. I got to eat. That's never really, thankfully. Right. It's yeah. A, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. That doesn't cross my mind. Right. Uh-huh. But what does cross my mind is how bad do I really want this? Yeah. If I don't really want it that bad, well, I deal with rejection a lot worse. It's a lot harder. I go in with a negative mindset. But if it's something I'm after and I really want, the rejection doesn't matter. So the hot, chick, the hot chick, if you really want the hot chick. I don't know. <laughs> don't, hey, don't make him answer that now. Come on. I believe I got the hottest chick. Yeah, that's what you do. Oh, <laughs> that's a good comeback. There it hey, is. Hey, yeah. Hey, but but here's, I didn't even have to work. Here's for the reality, and, I, and this <laughs> yeah, is this is going to go worried. back to the Hall of Fame deal. But what fear of rejection does is it limits your ability for opportunities in the future. Right. If if you're paralyzed by it and you don't put yourself out there, think about how many opportunities, whether it's in business, whether it's you know relational, whether it's health, whether it's whatever. If you're so worried about okay, what's going to happen if they reject me, and you don't put yourself out there, think about how many opportunities. Think yeah. about how much revenue you're missing out on. And I think of the Hall of Fame standpoint, and this is a question for you. This is an honest answer because guys, they lobby for themselves. All right. They go out there and they put themselves out there. T.O. did it. Mm. Ocho Cinco. I mean, all these guys are like trying to get themselves into the hall right. by lobbying, by, by having a PR firm do all this. That's not something that you've ever done. Right. Because, I, it, and, and I'm asking you, is it because you're like, damn, I don't want to put in all this work and like sell myself and then then get told no? Or what, what is it? Because th- that to me is very similar as like dumbing it all the way down to a girl in college is like, I'm just not going to put myself out there because then she can't say no. Well, I didn't know that. Was, well, I, I guess I've never approached it that way or thought about it that way. I just felt like, you know, my work speaks for itself. Yeah. Like, it, why? Sh- I'm not going to go out there and campaign for, <laughs> for yeah. to, to get votes or whatnot. But at the same time, I'll just say this, at the same time, like, I'm human. Like we're all human. Like rejection is a part of things that you just, it's like a stab yeah. in the chest. However you get it, whether it be for me, the hall of fame or, um, losing something, losing a deal or losing RFP or losing something that you really, really want. And you get rejected, man. It shit hurts and it yeah. should hurt. It, yeah. Right. It's just, don't let it define who you are. Yeah. Like the birds are going to chirp tomorrow. Uh-huh. You still need to eat. Call again and keep going yeah. and keep pressing this, yeah. you know, and, and I get where you're, where you're going uh, on that, Ben. But I think as, it, you know, when you deal with rejection, like I, we talked about Mark Cuban the other day on, on the show, Mark Cuban was rejected over and over and over again here in this Dallas market yeah. when he was bringing up broadcast.com. Yeah. You know, he was, he had this pitch deck and he was hitting everybody up. He was rejected. And guess what? His ass never stopped. Yeah. yeah, And that's my point about he was aligned with what he wanted. He was aligned. And it didn't yeah. matter what rejection he faced. So 
that's my point is I think it matters on how bad you want something, right. how yeah. you're going to handle it. Well, I think, and to that point, there's three categories, right? I think, do I need it? Yes. If you need yep. it, you're going to go get it, yep. right? Do I want it? Yeah, like I want it, or would I like to have? Right. And there's different categories uh, in yeah, the I effort like that. that you're yeah. actually going to put into it. Like, it. like I said, if you need it, if I need to put food on the table for my kids to eat, I'm going to go get it if I want it. OK, if I it would, I really would like to have a house in this area. Like I want my kids to go to the school. They don't need to, but I want them to. Right. Or, hey, I'd like to have this car or I'd like to have that. If you recognize like and for me in, in business, I'd like to have those. So you know what? If I don't get it, who gives a shit? Mm -hmm. Okay, then move on to the next one. And here's a real life example. And I don't want to say like who gives a shit because that's not what I'm saying. Is I spent two years uh, working a relationship with a company. Mm -hmm. Found out Friday. We presented a couple weeks ago. Uh, found out Friday that we didn't get the deal. Right. Uh, and I think I think a earlier version of myself. That would have destroyed my day. It would have destroyed my weekend. Right. It, I would have been like debilitated today. Like, I hate this. I can't do this. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, I recognize I, I would like to have that. Mm -hmm. But guess what? If I don't, I'm still moving forward. So I'm not going to let that weigh me down. And guess what? I'm going to fill something in that I like to have right behind it. Right. And I, I would I would have loved to get that because I love the people. I love the company. And I really wanted to work for them and serve them. But and it crushed me. There was like 20 minutes where like you feel it in your chest, you feel it in your gut, and I'm just hurting. But it's like, I, re I realized in the moment, it's like, did I need to have that? Mm. No, I didn't. Need My kids are still going to eat. Do I really, really want that? Mm. Arguably, but I for sure would have liked to have it. And it's not that, it's not that big of a deal. So move forward. Yeah. And guess what? I'm going to put myself out to other companies. And, and, and here's the other thing about rejection. And I mentioned it. Okay, take the puka shells off, turn yeah. the visor around, whatever you got to do. What did I do? And now I can take an objective look at it as opposed to I'm just not good enough. It's like, okay, well, what could I be better at? What did we not do in our presentation that the, the person that was Absolutely. awarded the deal, yeah. what did they do? So for me, it's, it's, it's a very peaceful place because this would have ruined me two, three years ago. Right. W would it have ruined you? Let me ask you this. Uh, we think about abundance. Would it have mm -hmm. ruined you two or three years ago because you didn't have, you weren't coming from a place of abundance? Meaning you get rejected on Friday. You still have a great pipeline in business. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost <laughs> mitigates that rejection yeah. a little bit because you, if you have a, something on a, or like the girl scenario, yeah. You didn't have a bad, you didn't have another girl. Yeah. Right. Girls weren't coming. You weren't being flocked with girls. So yeah. that one rejection took it so hard because you weren't working from a place of abundance. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No. And that's so I true. wonder how much of that has to deal with rejection. Are yeah. we coming from a place of abundance or scarcity? It does. And it, the more abundance we have, it's okay. typically we handle rejection Rejection's better good. because yeah. it's like, ah, oh, it's all right. Something else will come yeah. along. Yeah. And that's a good point. And I, I want to be able to relate to someone that like they, they're working their tail off to get a job and they get told no about this job. They get told no about this job. So I, I want to be relatable to those people. And to answer your point, yes, uh, have a strong pipeline, but it didn't hurt any less because guess what? That was a project that I quarterbacked that I was in charge of. Our CEO literally said, Tyler, I'm going to let you run. This is your right. deal. However you need to do it, however you think you need to get it done. And it wasn't good enough. It ultimately wasn't. So that was a direct reflection on me right. and, and all the team that was involved in that. I didn't do a good enough job setting them up to win. Yeah. But guess what? Next time I will. Yeah. And that's what you, learn, you learn from that, yeah. right? So you're learning from that. And yeah. you're, you're going back on that. But I, I think that's the like, Oh, go ahead. No. Since, <laughs> since Elizabeth Prophet's phone is just blaring That's 5,000. Yeah, that's 5,000. That cost you. Go ahead. Kind of lost my train of thought, too. No. For a second. But I honestly look at things, too, is if you're going through those, sometimes you go through those situations, and it's almost like my buddy that's in the nightclub. Like, there's got to be a part of it within you that says, you know what? You're missing out. Uh -huh. Like, I know who I am. Yeah. And I know what kind of work, I know what kind of work you do, Tyler. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they didn't, you didn't win that one, but that's not on you. That's on them. Because mm -hmm. your ass is going to put the work in, right? So part of it has yeah. to, you have to, sometimes you look at yourself and say, hey man, no, I am good enough. 
Yeah. That's, and this is this loss isn't on me. This loss is on you. Yeah, I recognize that. I do. Yeah. But but what I didn't do is I didn't relay it clear enough of the work that I'm putting in mm. for them and what I'm going to do to serve them. Because if I didn't if I didn't relay the value that our team can bring, then that's on me. And right. they just didn't know. Yeah, they didn't choose it. But I mean, you've got to take ownership in, in those losses. You have to take ownership in it, but you also cannot let it debilitate you from moving forward that's and right. putting yourself out there. Yeah. So Am I just not going to go present to another company now because like oh I, I don't I, this this feels so bad it, it's it's something that that years and years and years of experience realizing that that does nothing for me does nothing for my family right. does nothing for the team that's around me it does it does nothing to not put yourself out there right. you have to and that's and I think that's the the biggest thing is is do not be paralyzed for the fear of rejection and, we, and, and recognize that it's there. Right. We could, I mean, Darren Woodson, you know, all pro future hall of famer, like deals with rejection issues. Like yeah. Tyler, you know, backup, yeah. backup fullback for, <laughs> but yeah. you know what I mean? Like we all do it. Ben, I mean, it's the same thing. We all have that in us, but recognize I think you hit it on the head. Recognize the value you have. That's right. Look yourself in the mirror and recognize I bring value that someone else cannot That's because right. I am. I am who I am. I'm completely different than everyone else. I bring a different element of value. Recognize that. Run with it. Put yourself out there. Learn from the rejections. Learn from the losses. Yeah. But move forward. Yeah. yeah. The other thing I think about is we're so wired to be results driven. It's all about the result as opposed to the process. Yeah. And if you can shift your thinking a little bit, that helps with rejection. Yeah. Now, obviously, you can't go to your landlord or to your you know mortgage company and pay <laughs> pay with ambition. Yeah. You've got to pay with result. You got to pay with money. Yeah. But the point is, we get so wrapped up in the result of something yeah. that we forget about the process of something. That's you yeah. can't control. Huge. You can't control that company saying yes or no. Yeah. You can control the effort you put in to try That's to right. get them to say yes or no. That's right. But if you hang every single you know thought on that end result you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. Right. And our producer has a point she'd like to make. Yes. Um, so you mentioned that we don't really like your last point, but I think social media plays a huge role in that because on social media, we always see everyone's wins. We don't necessarily see like They're what awesome. goes into yeah. all that work, all that mm -hmm. success. And so I think people need to be more resilient in that and realize, okay, well, you know, yeah, she's Beyonce, but no one saw her running down the street in Houston in yeah. the rain, singing all those years leading up to that. No one saw Serena Williams on the tennis court when she was 10, 12 years old, hitting those balls in the net. Right. Everyone looks at, you know, or like Darren, they see you on Instagram, like, oh my God, your life is amazing. Yeah. But no one sees all the time that you spend. They just see the finished product. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So and I so, and I think that's true. I think there's a lot of truth to that too. And I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, let's not be gullible in the sense that failure is a part of life. Yeah. Like that's just, and, and when you understand that you're not going to win all the damn time, you're going to have your losses specifically in business. You're going to lose in business, right? So if you can wrap your mind up of, Hey, look, failure is going to be a part of it. I can get over it. Mm -hmm. I can overcome that. It's the same thing with our podcast. Well, we had failure early on. Still now, failure. We still now, do. <laughs> but did, that, did ben, that stop? Ben feels that failure more <laughs> yeah. than him. But does that? Does, but has that stopped us from no. every day chopping wood, continuing to go? We haven't been debilitated. We 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 yeah. know that there's more to it, right? Yeah. So handle the rejection. Understand that failure is a part of it, but don't stop. That's right. And the process, man. That was a huge. Yeah. That was a great point because and, and go back to cold calling. Think about the losses you took, the rejection that you took, but. A question was asked that you didn't have the answer for, then you knew now I got to go and prepare mm -hmm. with that answer. Yeah. If you didn't make those calls, you don't know what you don't know. Right. You don't know the things that you need to improve on. So again, it's not win or lose. Mm -hmm. Yes, like it, in our culture, it's so much like, oh no, it's it's not a loss if you learn. You know, yeah. yes, it's a loss. Recognize that <laughs> it's a loss. <laughs> yes, but yeah. but that does not mean that you're not better because of it. That's it does right. not mean that you can't on the next one go back and, right. and do a better job and get that win yeah. or get closer to it. But the, the, I love that because it's about the process. Mm. And, and for those young, just out of college, entering into the business world, realize there's going to be a lot more losses than there are wins. But that's all part of it because 
10, 15, 20 years from now, when you're in a leadership role, you're going to be able to relate to those new kids yeah. right out of college, and you're going to be able to teach them and, and help build the team because of that experience that you had. Yeah, Darren, what you just said is a good reminder for me personally because I do go into situations just assuming gonna it's going to go exactly mm -hmm. how I plan. And that's just being young and dumb, I think. And so that's a good reminder that you've got to realize that it's not always going to go according to plan. Right. And that's okay. And mm -hmm. you're going to lose, and that's okay. So that helps take the sting of rejection a little bit. And that's a good reminder for me personally going yeah. forward. Yeah. Because I do go into situations thinking – Oh, it's just this is plan A. This is what's gonna. This is what's gonna. Yeah, it feel work like out. life at times when you really look back and take a step back from. And I, and again, I'm older than you guys, but it's like a game. It's like what we're playing specifically in the business world. Once you get to a point in the business world, it's like it's like a chess match. Like there, there's gonna be times where you're up, you're up, and there's gonna be times where you're sliding back, and you know you got people are gonna take advantage of you, or you're gonna get some wins here and there. It's just a fact. It's like a roller coaster ride. So if you go into it understanding that this is going to be a ride, I'm going to have my win. Sometimes I'm going to get my teeth kicked in, mm -hmm. but I'm going to pop back up. That's that's the part of life that you you always have yeah. to just and have humility through the process. And I think Latali, you said yeah. it best, man. Is like if you get hit in the mouth and you don't get up and you don't go out there and continue to pursue whatever you feel is your dream, then then that's on you. And, you know, it goes back to that lion. The lion has to hunt. He doesn't kill. He doesn't eat. So you either starve or you don't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think the phrase, the devil you know versus the devil you don't. Yeah. And Andy mentioned this a few weeks ago. The work is never going to stop. Yeah. yeah. You're always going to be working for yeah. something. Yeah. Oh, Just really? like rejection is never going to stop. You're always going to be rejected for yeah. something. Yeah. So get comfortable with that thought. Yeah. And that idea, mm -hmm. and pursue things with that in the back of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. This may not work out the way I want it to, but what is going to come away from it that I can learn from it? Yeah. yeah. And I think I think if you've just handled or you just went through a rejection in, in some form or another, it's just like football. Create a twenty four hour rule. Yeah. Look, it's okay to feel that pain. It's it's normal to go there. Okay, but now feel it, recognize it, notice it. What is that? What is that feeling like? And then twenty four hours, you've got to move on to the next right. thing. Then you got to be, pro, you know, proactive about that, whatever the situation was. But you've got to move on. I mean, one of one of our uh, partners in the in the firm, he always says, "Okay, you know, you can take a day, and you can be mad, you can be upset, you can mm -hmm. be sad, you can be those, but then you got to move forward." That's right. You got so take it, recognize it, feel it, and learn from that feeling because right. that feeling's not necessarily bad. Because I mean. Hopefully it's not good. That's right. Hopefully you're yeah. not the person that's like, huh, oh my God, man, I don't have to do this it. now. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe you need to look at a different career, different, yeah. different uh, life choices here, but feel that pain. It's, I mean, we're as humans, we, we respond to pain, right? right? And we go do something different so we don't have to feel that pain anymore. Recognize it and figure out a different Be in path. the fight. Get in the fight. That's right. Yeah. Get in the fight. That's right. Awesome. Yeah. <sighs> Good stuff, boys. Well, ben, I accept you. I don't <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you guys yeah, as we yeah. open this up. Thank you so much for the interaction. Thank you so much for the feedback. Uh, please continue to share. That's how this thing grows, yeah. is by you guys sharing and being so awesome. We are so grateful for anyone listening to this. Thank you so much. See you Friday.